One mic. I need this one mic. It's just different. One mic with Big Mike. The overall tenor of, of what he's saying is very stupid. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. Maybe it's not racism. Maybe it's placism. Brother has to know his place. Right, Bob? One mic with Big Mike. Things aren't always what they seem. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limit. Don't just tell me that the reason something's being done is because that's the way it's always been done. Because the first thing I'm going to say to you is slavery. And now, your host. I got the big homie here who needs no introduction. Big Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. All I need is one, one mic. mic. All I need is one mic. What up, what up? Welcome into the Hump Day edition, the Wednesday edition okay. here of the One Mike with Big Mike show. I am your host, Big Mike, being heard live right now via Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, as well as on TuneIn and One Mike with Big Mike.com, my website. You guys can also check out the live streaming video if you like. I'm doing it right now on Facebook.com backslash the number one M I C W I T H B I G. M-I-K-E, and make sure you guys follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the same damn handle. You guys can be a part of the show as well by texting me at 404-902-8104. You can also leave your uh, your comments and questions and your criticisms below the Facebook video as comments. Or you can jump inside my live interactive chat room like the big homie. I am no those already has. What up, homie? To do that, all you got to do is be listening to me via Spreaker or via or via the Spreaker app or, of course, via my website. And you'll see a little thought bubble icon sitting right there on the uh, on the streaming player. Just click on that situation and boom, you'll be in the building. You can come on in here and join in on some of this foolery I got for you guys today. Uh, make sure, you know, while you're clicking that thought bubble, click that um, those share buttons as well. Share me with your Twitter friends and your your Facebook friends and all that kind of thing so we can continue to grow the numbers and grow the listenership and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, If you don't get a chance to stick around for the entire show, do not worry. You can catch the show on demand on every last uh, outlet that I've already mentioned as well as on iTunes and iHeartRadio, if I'm saying it in English, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and, of course, YouTube where you can get the video and the audio. Make sure you guys subscribe to the iTunes, uh, to the YouTube, so you can get alerts anytime uh, the show uh, is, is either posted or goes live. Uh, you guys can uh, follow me or like me on iHeart and Stitcher and Google Play Music and all those kind of things. All right, today's show. Today we usually we usually do fantasy football today, right? But um, both of my guys, Willie Lovato, Matt Latowski, both had prior engagements tonight. Uh, Willie's having a baby, so shout out to him and his old lady. Uh, they expecting a day. I didn't even ask him if it was a boy or a girl, but. I don't think it matters as long as it's healthy. It shouldn't. So they having a baby today. And my man, Matt Latosky's being drugged out to a musical. This is what he tells me. Um, that he forgot he had to go to with his old lady, cheating on Renee, I, I, I assume. Because it's not her. She in the chat room. So that's going on. Going out and to a musical that he planned on going to. And, you know, as a fellow dude, I say getting some. It's much more important than doing my dumb ass show. Like, like if it came down to that for me, I wouldn't do the show. <laughs> and I'm the damn ho, so yeah, whatever, dude. He got to make his old lady happy, so they out there enjoying. Well, he apparently isn't. He told me it was going to suck, but <laughs> there goes that. Um, so, yeah, no fantasy football today. So you guys are on your freaking own. Um, I've done pretty well. <laughs> I'm in first place in my league, so you know I think I can handle a week a week away from the from the experts one time or you know what you guys can also go to their websites man um matt's at sporting news um my man willie hold on i'm about to tell you willie's at fantasy ranks on twitter and his website you can just google fantasy football 24 7 if you want to get in touch with either one of uh the fantasy guys that i messed with on the show uh so speaking of the show what do i have today bunch of foolery of course but at the bottom of the hour no guests tonight so we're gonna do on this day in the at the bottom of the hour, my uh, every episode segment where I, or not a segment, but a feature where I take you guys back in history and give you guys a little history lesson as far as the things that happen on this particular day in sports go. Um, I got a couple of things under my little, I put categories on my notes. The little thing I like to do, like what you're looking at. Some shows that a lot of us kind of like are getting renewed. I just kind of, before the show started, went over that little list, who got renewed 
who got the axe or whatnot. So uh, I'll give you guys a couple of names, a couple of shows that some of you guys probably enjoy, as well as some other things, some new stuff coming from Netflix, so you can get your Netflix on, Netflix and chill on, in, in a variety of locations now. Um, and I want to kind of talk to you guys, you know, see, you know, the guys who guys and girls who listen to the show about I was reading something today and it, it was referencing, you know, sports radio and, and sports commentators, not commentators, but sports uh, talk hosts and the things that are expected of them. So I kind of want to ask the people who listen to this show, you know, what, what do you guys expect when you listen to this foolishness that I got going on? What are you expecting? You know, what do you want from your sports talk host? Um, speaking of questions, a couple of things that's going on today. First, the question of the day. Apparently, Al Horford had to go out with, um, not go out with, <laughs> like as an injury. Al Horford uh, chose to miss the game, the Celtics game, to be with his wifey while they was having a um, having another kid. You know, he's got the son, and now he's got a little baby girl. So shout out to Al Horford. Um, and a particular somebody in, in Boston had a problem with that. And uh, this is something that I'm glad this come up. This came up because there's no real easy way to bring it up. I pay attention to a lot of stuff that goes on in the world. I look at a lot of Vice Land and Vice and things of that nature. And one thing that goes on in the world that doesn't go on here, and I think it leads to a lot of other things when it comes to like misogyny and things like that, is this 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 thing about this old school, this antiquated uh, way of thinking, this archaic way of thinking, is that woman, you have child, you take care of baby. I man, go kill, go kill food and bring home meat. <laughs> you know what I mean? That 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 barbaric way of thinking to the point where like. Like paternity, uh, paternity leave is something that men, or maybe sometimes even women, look down on on another man or a man for. Like, man, get your ass out of here, go to work. So I want to have that conversation with you guys as well. So that's our question of the day. Like, and I'm I'm, I'm spending it on football, but you know me, I don't never necessarily. I'm not football. I'm spending it on sports, but I really ever just stick to that lane when I'm talking to you guys. Um, but the question of the day is. How would you feel? Your favorite team, uh, one of the stars, Al, Al Horford is one of the big pieces to that to that Celtic squad. Now, um, one of the stars of the team decides, you know what? I'm not going to play in this game. You know, and right now, for right now, the questioning will be, it'll, it'll remain just a game because that's what Al Horford missed. He didn't miss Game Seven of the NBA Finals. He missed a regular season game, like regular season game number, I don't know, twenty or something, number fourteen or something. You know what I mean? So we'll keep it that, and maybe we'll, we'll we'll up the ante as the show goes on. But the other thing we're going we're doing today is whenever something stupid comes to my mind, which is probably going to be very very frequently, and the questions come to my mind, we're going to start putting up poll questions during the show. We, when I say we, I mean <laughs> Renee. I'll just utter them out and then say, Renee, let's let's go to the poll with that. And also, I know that's what she said. Um, I kind of stole that from Dan Lebatard. That's like something I'm I'm kind of. That's a show that I've kind of been uh, consuming a little bit of here lately because I, I enjoy the format. I, I enjoy the stupidity of it. So I'm stealing that from him, and he does it a lot, and I can tell what he's doing. He's branding his his social media. He, he keeps saying He keeps saying it. You know, put that on levitardwhatever.com. So we're going to do that here on this show. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to stealing, man, when it's a good idea. I'm not at all. Uh, by the way, my Twitter is at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G, M I K E. So yeah, we'll get into that. That's our question of the day, brought to us by SportsNewsAndBrews dot com. We probably, you know, what? we might X the question of the day. We might just uh, eliminate that and then move the sports news and brews all over to like the poll question thing. You know, because the, the question of the day don't really get no traction during the day, and all it does is give Renee an excuse to bug me early in the damn morning. So we might just go ahead and X that and then keep it, and then let let sports news and brews sports news and brews dot com be the sponsor of our of our daily poll questions. Yeah, that might be something we talk about doing. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, you know, Russell Westbrook, get you guys the NBA schedule tonight as well. We got a bunch of college football stuff to talk about as well because yesterday the first to the last um, situation with the college football playoff rankings came out. The ne- the last one will come out on Sunday. So we'll go, go ahead and, you know, check that out and see. It was was popping with that because there's a lot of stuff that could happen and a lot of stuff that might happen that maybe shouldn't happen. And we'll try to go over some of these uh, uh, scenarios as well. We got some coaching changes again, another coaching change, some coaching openings. And, you know, something we do every year. We talk about like after the fact we talk about like black coaches not getting an opportunity in the world of college football. 
There's no Rooney rule and all this kind of stuff. I got an update on that, the Rooney rule situation. And also, uh, I want to I want to get some names. I found some names today that of some guys who I don't know if they're going to get jobs, but guys that um, some you know, some you know from other areas of life or areas of, of football. But I want to give you guys a name. I don't want to do the dumbass Stephen A. Smith, Smith thing when he says, I know there's got to be some brothers out there that are qualified. Okay. You know that, but you didn't go take this, take the extra step to find out who they were. So I want to do that today as well. Um, and as far as uh, leading off the show, I know I've been talking for a while, but to actually lead the show off, we got to talk about Eric Dickinson, man. We got to talk about ED and this whole situation that's going on with um, him and the <laughs> coach of the Rams. My gosh. Like, Jeff Fisher, man, is... One of the one of the one of the most I don't know if I want to call it fortunate, but he's one of those dudes that I guess in some sort of NFL circles his name comes up and it's like, all right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, all right, let's hire Jeff. For what? That it's like it's like they don't even look at his resume. He's been on the competition committee forever and all this kind of things, but he's done no winning. This dude's gonna be the the, the losing his head coach. Ever before it's all said and done. And he's coached how many teams now? He's coached it's only a second? It seemed like it's longer than, than two. Just the Rams and the and the and the Titans, right? Well the Titans the oil has turned into the Titans or whatever, and now the LA the, the Rams, whatever. St. Louis Rams became the LA Rams. But it just seems like it seemed like Jeff Fisher had another job. But I guess he didn't. It just he just been around so damn long. Long enough to be the at this point, second losing his coach in the damn and in the entire tire uh, NFL. So apparently, not apparently, I'm not going to say apparently, whatever. He he had a phone conversation with Eric Dickerson in which he told Eric Dickerson because of some things that Eric Dickerson said, has said on his sports show out there in L.A., being critical of the team because they suck, they're bad. I told you guys, when, I, when we watch Hard Knocks, and I was forced to come on this show every, what was it, Wednesday, and talk about that bad, bad, bad St. Louis Rams team. I knew there was going to be this. You know, my man, Ben Troop, comes on the show every Monday to do Troop Talk. You know, Jeff Fisher's this guy. He's the man who drafted him out of Florida. So there's a certain level of that. But even now, you hear him on Mondays, he's even turned around. Turned around. You know what I mean, there's no, no, there's no getting past the fact that that team is bad. And it maybe shouldn't even be as bad as it is. Now, you can talk about them playing in the NFC West and it being a tough division most year, or most recently here, except for this year, because the Cardinals are bad, the, the Rams are bad, and the freaking uh, 49ers are bad. And, you know, the Seahawks are kind of average. You know what I mean? But for the, the Aaron Donalds of the world and the, the uh, what's the kid's name from Georgia? The Ogletrees. And, of course, Ty Gurley. Um, they don't have really nothing outside but besides Kenny Britt and, you know, that. And, and Tavon Austin, like Mr. Just Get the Ball and Run, you know, don't run no routes. But yeah, for for what for what it's worth, it feels like the team should at least look a little bit better on on the field. He waits forever to put the rookie quarterback in when everybody in life is starting a co- rookie quarterback. I don't care about circumstance. Of course, Dak Prescott, two people had to get hurt before he got in the game. Of course, with with Carson Lynch, um, they had to get an unbelievable deal from the Vikings to trade away Sam Bradford. Of course, a lot of things had to happen. Cody Kessler out there in, in, uh, in, with the Browns. But still, be the first-round pick. And you, got, and you got Case Keenum. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like you got some grizzled, winning veteran in front of him. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, like, I tell you guys all the time, I'm not to do the call for nobody's job and somebody needs to get fired. Because a, th- a lot of times we don't think about, the people who say that stuff don't think about, it's not just him, man. It's people who work for him. His whole staff gonna go in. The new coach gonna come in and bring in a new staff. So I'm not clamoring for that. But in a, in a, in, a, in an industry that we're always we're continuously told it's about production. Your man hadn't produced anything. So anyway, um, this conversation goes down, and I, <laughs> I read the transcript right before I started the show because I heard what Eric Dickinson said happened, and it's a like you guys may have heard. The things that were said 
uh, the bikes that they played on Sports Center and all that. But it was a full blown conversation, man. It's like <laughs> a lot of stuff happened. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and read all this to you guys, but basically he calls Eric Dickinson. Eric Dickinson picks up the phone. He's like, "What's up?" And apparently he had been hearing rumors that some people had problem with things he was saying, didn't want him around. And then he found out that people, those people, may have been less need the GM. And uh, uh, I'm gonna call him, call this man Derek Fisher, uh, Jeff Fisher. So um, <laughs> he calls Eric Dickinson, and I guess kind of, kind of, kind of tries to undress him about the things that he's saying about the team and the coaching staff. What did I call his name? Paxton Lynch. What did I call? Him? <laughs> oh man. Well, no, Carson Wentz is what I. What did I call him? Paxton Lynch. <laughs> I just made these two dudes have a baby. And then <laughs> appreciate you, dog. And then they just came out with one name. God, yeah. I have no reason to know this kid's name, man. He's a kid that everybody was so high on at the beginning of the season. Oh my God, it's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Mm-mm. Wait, what's happening in this damn chat room? Renee talking about I am no dose as a man after her own heart. And is there something? Hundred dollar bet the person that got upset was. <laughs> I will not take that bet. Of course, he's talking about he's talking about the Al Horford situation. Of course, the person that got upset about Al Horford going out. And now I want to talk I'm gonna talk to you guys about that here in just a second. But let me get back to this situation with Eric Dickerson and, and Jeff Fisher. This is the one mic with Big Mike show here holding you down on the hump day, trying to help you get over the hump. I'm being heard via Spreaker.com. The Spreaker app as well is on TuneIn and of course one mic with Big Mike.com. You guys sign up for your free Spreaker accounts and then uh, search for One Mike with Big Mike, then follow me. That way you get an, uh, an alert every time the show goes live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7. If you'd like to be a part of the show, feel free to text me at 404-402-8104. You can also leave your comments below my live streaming video. I'm streaming live video on my Facebook page, which is the number one M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Or you can jump on, jump on inside this live interactive chat room, which is uh, very easy to do. If you're listening via Spreaker, the Spreaker app, or my website, just click on that little thought bubble icon you see there, and then boom. A couple steps later, you're in the building. Uh, Make sure you guys are also clicking on that little heart button and those little share buttons as well so all your friends know the type of foolery that you're involved in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 o'clock. So anyway, so Eric Dickerson (laughs) hears this dude say that. Tells him I appreciate it. I'm a grown ass man. I'm not no kid. I don't work for the Rams, which is true. But see, here's kind of the problem with that though. It's like you don't work for the Rams, but you all but you you use the Rams. You know, you're out in, the, in L.A. This is what I was talking to like Cato June about the other day. I was like, dude, how many meals do you pay for? You go back to Indianapolis with a with a with a damn Super Bowl ring. You see what I'm saying? Like you use it in your favor. I just feel really and, and truly. The, the the world and the society that we live in that everybody's worried about the public perception and the PR and all this kind of stuff. That's all this is. I don't give a damn about Eric Dickerson. I don't I don't care if he gets to go if he if he's mad at the that don't move me at all. Be better. You know what I mean? Be better and former stars won't have to speak about you. Uh current stars won't have to speak about you. I you know what I didn't do? I didn't load this bite that I have. The Snoop Dogg commentary, and it's mad funny. So while I'm talking, I'm, go- I'm going to find it right now because <laughs> my man just kind of lost it on on this whole situation. And I'm like, why do you care so much? You know what I mean? Like, it don't affect you. You get to go. You're going to hear what he said. You get to do all the stuff you want to do. Who cares? Here, here's Snoop Dogg kind of summing up this whole conflict between Jeff Fisher and 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 uh, uh, um. Eric Dickerson. I was about to call this dude Eric Davis. That's a different dude playing a different position for a different team in California. But anyway, oh, by the way, Jeff Fisher, when he did his first press conference, was like, I don't know how, I don't know where all this is coming from. It's like, come on now, B. You can't do that. <laughs> I mean, this dude, this dude has basically transcribed and, and, and dictated to everyone an entire conversation that happened. There's not your, if, if that's a lie, that's like, the, that's like the Michael Jordan of lies for somebody to do that. And then my man stands up, I don't know where's all where all this is coming from. You ain't called this dude. <laughs> you need to tell me you just this, this is catching you straight out the blue. Yeah, so as soon as I heard that, I was like, yeah, my man know he effed up. Now it's time to try to like 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 cover your own ass type stuff. When really like if it's me, and maybe this is why I don't hold with those type of positions, I'm like, yeah, 
F Eric Dickinson, man. You want to put on some pads to come help this, help this situation out around here? If not, I'm good. But it is what it is. That's why I want to know from you guys, man. Like, what do, what do professional sports teams owe greats, former players? What, do, do they owe them anything? You know, maybe, Renee, first one, put it on the poll. Do professional sports teams owe former great players anything? Yes or no? There it is. One mic with Big Mike. That's the first one mic with Big Mike. Poll is on Twitter. Well, it's about to be on Twitter. Renee is going to put it there. But while she's doing that, you guys listen to Snoop. You sorry mother <laughs> That's why the fuck y'all not winning. How the fuck is y'all going to do one of y'all greats like that? Eric Dickinson is a <laughs> ram great. He should be given all access. But y'all want to let celebrities on the sideline and do what we want to do. And we don't have shit to do with the organization. I don't even give a fuck about the Rams. But y'all gave me all kind of passes and let me move around and all kind of shit. But y'all want to disrespect Eric Dickerson. Yep. Coach need to go. He's sorry as fuck. He don't want to coach. He ain't won shit. He ain't going to win shit. He need to go. Period. You disrespect Eric Dickerson. Eric Dickerson is a fucking great man. It ain't about him being a Ram. He's a great, a Hall of Famer. He, he deserves all access at the Coliseum. So says Snoop. So says Snoop. You know, the best part of this whole thing is this part right here. You sorry, mother. <laughs> That's how he started it. <laughs> That's how the whole thing. St- you sorry, mother. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I don't understand why anyone can. And then here's the thing, too. If you're Eric Dickinson, like Eric Dickinson, he may be 50 something years old, but he's spoiled. You know what I mean? Like, Eric Dickinson has only had to be Eric Dickinson to get stuff from white people since he was 16 years old. Y'all seen the 30 for 30, a man with the gold Trans Am, big Jerry Curl at SMU where they, when they got the death penalty and all that. Like, Eric Dickinson is that dude, you know? And I'm, I'm not saying I know him, but you can understand how somebody who's lived life being Eric Dickinson, everywhere he's going, he even tells, he even tells, uh, 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 Jeff Fisher that in this in this conversation that he kind of transcribes, he tells us, dude, you can go coach wherever you want to go, coach. But I'm going to always be Eric Dickinson of the L.A. Rams. Even even like, yeah, here it goes. Here's the quote. You can coach the Rams. You can go back and coach the Titans. You might coach the Browns. You can go to USC. I will always be Eric Dickinson of the Los Angeles Rams. That's why I have the, that gold jacket. Hold on, pimp. <laughs> Hold on, man. Like, now it's getting into a different area. Like, you high-siding on this dude. And plus, here's the other thing, too. Like, Eric Dickinson got a radio show, but he went out of his way to contact media members to continue to to fuel this thing. Like, Jeff Fisher was like, all right, man, you beat me up. Damn. Stop punching me. Like, stop hitting me. And Eric Dickinson was like, nope. Right hand, right hand, left hook. He just kept banging him. You know what I mean? Today... You know, I heard Jeff Fisher like, yeah, he's welcome. He's always welcome. I don't know where this, where the lines got crossed, but I'm moving on to whoever they play this weekend. You know, that whole, I'm moving on to, yeah, do your job and let the people asking the question do their damn job. They'll move on when they're ready to move on. They got all their damn answers. Um, <laughs> Renee chiming in in the chat room says the Snoop Dogg and uh, Martha Stewart show is hilarious. They just got, that's one of the shows that got renewed for another year. That Snoop, I haven't seen it. But, uh, yeah, it got renewed for another year. So, shout out to Snoop. You know, Snoop is a, he's, he's an ignorant SOB, and he's, he's, like, mad stupid sometimes. But, you know, again, this is what I always say. Like, it, what, what do you expect from, from your rappers? Like, just be a rapper or whatever he is now. I don't know if he's necessarily a rapper anymore. He's, like, a, a media guy, uh, actor, or whatever. Whatever it is that he does, that's all I can expect from him. I'm like, I don't expect Snoop to change the world or give me some sort of deep philosophical thought on why, you know, why men hate women. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, if he does, I'm, I'll be blown away. But if he, he doesn't, I don't expect it from him. I expect from him exactly what it is that he does. So anyway, um, <clears throat> So I was thinking about I, the, the thought, like I mentioned, the thought that came to my mind was like, what is it that these people are owed? Like people, Eric Dickerson was a great Ram. He was also a great Colt, though, as well. And people may say he was a greater Colt than Ram. He played a year or two here in the Atlanta, 
with the Atlanta Falcons <laughs> with Jerry Glanville getting his ass murdered in the run and shoot. Um, whatever team it is that you play, that you root for, it's like how how big of a shadow? Because like Jim Brown with the Browns, like that team has left and come back as an expansion team. And he he has access to everything. Remember when Mike Holmgren was coaching that team? Uh, one of the reasons that I, I understand that Mike Holmgren had to leave because of because he didn't want Jim Brown around all the damn time. And I don't like, dude, I don't blame nobody for that. Like, how many of y'all want to do your job with like a dude who worked there like 10, 20 years ago, hanging around all the time, telling you what how how it used to be in the old days? Don't nobody want that. All this like this crazy ass. You gotta respect people for what they've done. No, nah, I don't. Not me. <laughs> like Eric Dickinson was an awesome running back when he played running back. Eric Dickinson is just another dude now. Again, going back to what I just said, you can no longer do for me the things that you that I know of you doing. And the thing that you moved on to is just a subsidiary of what you've always done. You get on the radio and talk about sports, the sport mainly that you played for a long time. Because you didn't have anything else. Most people who play professional sports, you heard me talk about this with Ben True. They don't really have anything to move on to. It's always trying to find the next thing that's aligned with the thing that they've already been doing. That's what, and I don't live in LA, so I don't listen to, I don't listen to Eric Dickerson's sports show. And then the other side of that is like Jeff Fisher, you don't want people talking about you be better and don't go on hard knocks. I mean, I don't know if that thing was forced on them, but don't do that. You know, because people want to know about the move to L.A. All that happened is people, you got exposed to, uh, for being the shell of a coach that you are, dude. That whole thing was totally ridiculous. And now it's like, oh, I can't believe Eric Dickinson is talking about me. Derek Dickinson was on your team for a while, too. Not on your only team that way, but he was on, like, Team Fisher. Good coach and all this kind of craziness. Nah, man. It's it, like I said. It's so much. It's so much uh, hypocrisy in this damn thing. People get mad, get their panties torn, and it's like now I couldn't stand you from the beginning. Like this dude says, like, well, let me find it for you guys because he, he says one last thing that's like real. It's bitchy. I'm just gonna <laughs> say that to you, man. He says, I give you a pass because of Eddie. Eddie George is what he's talking about. But I'm going to say this to you, Jeff. You never have to worry about me at a game again at the Coliseum as long as you're coaching. I'm not coming ever again. It's like, all right, dude. Like, how serious is it? You wanted sideline passes for you and all your boys. They told you, nah. And all this is now is is now because because this dude has been given such latitude and he's been propped up on this pedestal. He's been given the, the illusion that he has power like a college booster. So if he starts screaming loud enough, and this is why he went on this like that little media media tour, talking to anybody and everybody who listened to him, saying without saying, fire Jeff Fisher. And then today there's a rumor out that <laughs> that extension for him and Les Snead, those extensions are still on the table. And they have like certain caveats in them giving the team uh uh the right to to avoid them after one year, you know, like four year extensions or three year extensions, something like that, but the team having the right to avoid them after one year. But still, why even do that? Like, why, why, come, why come to the table with Jeff Fisher in 2017? Like, the move has happened. The thing that you probably said you needed him there for because he's the guy who was in place when the Oilers moved from Houston to Tennessee or to Memphis then to, then to Nashville. He was the coach when all that was going on, and you figured the guy who's been through it before can help the team through it. They there now. Bye. If that's what you're trying to do. Like, that whole, like, well, let's just see what happens because he's Jeff Fisher. Meanwhile, meanwhile, somebody like Marvin Lewis who go to the playoffs every year that's going to be packing his damn bags. How you love that? that, that. That's what you was talking about the other day. I am no dose. It is good to be white, <laughs> especially when you're Jeff Fisher, B. I'm going to take a break here, come back. I got to do on this day. I'm going to wrap up the rest of my NFL stories. Then we're going to move on to this college football playoff situation, man, because it's, it's getting real dicey. And it is what it's supposed to be. Four teams, man. I'll explain and talk about it on the other side of a break. This is the One Mike with Big Mike Show. I'm right here. Spreaker.com is here. 
um, the Spreaker app, as well as on TuneIn and One Mic with BigMike.com. Make sure you guys are checking out the live video stream. It's going on right now on Facebook Live. My Facebook page is One Mic with Big Mike, spelled the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. And don't forget, if you guys want to get in touch with the show, Text me at 404-902-8104. Leave your comments below the live streaming video or jump inside my live interactive chat room. Be listening via Spreaker, the app, or one mic with bigmike.com and click on that little thought bubble icon and boom. You can be a part of the show as well. We also got the question of the day, which is relating to what I'm talking about right now. No, it's not. I'm sorry. That's another question. The question of the day has to do with Al Horford taking paternity leave. And I want to know how you feel about it. the star player of your favorite team, whether it be football, baseball, basketball, whatever it is taking paternally leaving the team to go be with his wifey while she's spitting out spitting out a little human from her vaggy vag <laughs> i'll be back well, i have one question for you do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure the one mic with big mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers one mic with big mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms and your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well let's get to work please send all inquiries to mike at one mike with big mike.com thank you for listening thank you for your continued support all I need is one mic. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood? Or an earthquake is destroying buildings? When a tornado is tearing through town? Or a hurricane strikes? Or is the best time, perhaps, today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. And it's not always as simple as using your cell phone. That's why now is the time to take action. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. And now, 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 back to one mic. What are we waiting for? Let's get to it. With Big Mike. It is, man. It is hump day. Right here. The one mic with Big Mike show. Coming at you live from the ATL, man. The metro area. It was a damn tornado about to roll through this joint early. I didn't know if the show was going to happen. I was like, man, if stuff start getting too wild around here. Yeah, we're going to have to give it the old, the old kibosh. Anyway, man, it's Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, as well as on TuneIn, one mic with BigMike.com. You can hear me on all four of those outlet, outlets live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7 o'clock. You can also get the show on demand and every show that I've ever, 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 ever done on demand on all four of those outlets, as well as on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and YouTube. And speaking of the outlets, don't forget, man, you guys, we're uh, taking on sponsors right now. So if you got a company, got a product that you'd like to showcase and you'd like to get it out to the masses, holler at your boy, man. Uh, send me an email to Mike at one mic with big and we'll send you the packages. We I keep saying we like I'm going to do it. <laughs> Renee's going to send you the packages and uh, we'll work something out with you, man. You know, what I mean, we're trying to uh, reach one, teach one and have everybody eat. You know what I mean? Also, don't forget I'm streaming live video right now on the Facebook page, uh, which is at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Same handle for my Twitter and my Instagram if you guys want to be a part of this show. Have your thoughts heard and you want to answer the question of the day or anything like that, text me at 404-902-8104. You can also leave comments below the live streaming video or jump on inside this live interactive chat room I got set up by clicking on that little thought bubble icon that you see on the streaming player, only for listening to me via Spreaker the Spreaker app on your mobile device, or the one mic with bigmike.com website. Speaking of other things you guys can email me about, you can email me You can email me about the show if you want to, but we're looking for interns too. Um, I don't know. Is there like a, there's got to be like an age limit, right? You got to be like in college or whatever. Yeah, be of a, be a college age and have an interest in uh, sports media or media or, or, you know, radio in general. I got, a, I got plenty of a wealth of knowledge that I can share and just be willing to, uh, you know, put in a little bit of effort and have a little bit of fun and don't take things too seriously. Uh, no travel. 
You know what I mean? You ain't got to, well, it ain't that you ain't got to. I ain't, I ain't trying to have you at my crib. You know, I mean, possibly it might work out that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where I have some things to teach you, but we live in 2016. Everything can be done virtually. You know what I mean? So if you know somebody or if you yourself uh, want to you know, learn a little bit more about the, the sports media industry or, or the radio industry, broadcast media industry as a whole, just send me an email. Put the internship in the, in the subject line, and someone, either myself or Renee. Um, so Renee is taking. She says high schoolers as well. She's trying to go all the way back, and I got an opportunity that I might take take up if if, the, if time allows to pos- possibly speak at a high school next Friday. But I'm not sure I'll be able to do it. Somebody reached out to me yesterday about um, some other stuff I do, the voiceover stuff I do. But I might take that opportunity as well, and maybe go through that joint. And uh, if I can make it and poach, poach some internship people, since Renee said high schoolers are okay, all right, sweet. I, I just didn't know what the legalities were, you know, as far as that, me propositioning somebody's high school student <laughs> to, I don't, I don't know. I get weird when stuff like that comes around, comes about, you know. You can't apply. I mean, I, mean, I am no doubt. You are already in the building. You can apply if you want to. It ain't really no apply, you know. You, like Basically, like, here's the thing. Before I do on this day, here's the thing. It's one of those things that, I'll just make sure you know what I want. <laughs> and then you can be able to say, you know what? I ain't trying to mess with this dude. <laughs> and then Renee will do the same thing. And, yeah, you believe in God. God help you. <laughs> anyway, I want to do, like, a whole segment on, you know, becoming an intern for the One Mike with Big Mike show. But that's just that. Uh, but right now it's the time of the show when we don't have guests where I get in my DeLorean and take a look back. Now, 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 let's take a look back. This day. On this day. Anyway, I know I am no those. I thought, you know, the blue meth industry was, was holding you down. You want to do what you want to mess with this foolishness for? Got the Walter White, the Mr. White meth industry on lock around here. All right, anyway. On this day in 1887... The first indoor softball game happened in Chicago, Illinois. I wonder if that was softball for women or men. Because it is. It was 1887. You know what I mean? Like, women ain't have, like, hey, you bros think you're going through it right now. <laughs> 1887. Shoot. Was slavery still going on in 1887? Somebody check on that. <laughs> on this day in 1948, America's, uh, the American Baseball Negro League, Negro National League, disbands. Um, I don't think that was the entire Negro League at that time. I don't think the Negro League itself disbanded until till some years later. Um, for those of you who don't know the story of how the Negro League was supposed to operate post Jackie Robinson and, and those guys, it was supposed to serve as a, uh, a minor league to Major League Baseball. But what happened is, what happens a lot in a lot of cases, uh, the white boys was like, nah, just go get the best of them and leave the other ones over there with no financial support, no nothing, just to flounder until they die. And that's what happened. You know what I mean? It became like a lot of things, man. It became like one of those things where we're looking at um, something I talk about all the time, like the civil rights movement, how things that were envisioned didn't necessarily come to fruition. You know, we wanted, the people back then wanted equality, but they didn't understand that a lot of times the things that you were going towards weren't equal to the things that you were going away from as far as a quality level, uh, historically black colleges and universities being one thing. Like, they started letting these Negroes go to these white schools, and they was like, damn, what the hell they got around here? And meanwhile, the black schools were still like, whatever, we black. They're going to still come, and they didn't. Not for the reasons, you know, the athletes and things of that nature. Uh, I heard Eddie Robinson one time. I saw this dude be asked a question about integration and if he thought it would have an effect on Grambling. That man... Straight faced said no, because we're Grambling. Anybody ever been on the campus campus of Grambling? I don't know how it looks now, but can't, but uh, uh, Grambling used to be a dump. It's a state funded school that every year the state would continue to cut funding to the school. Former uh, high school teammate of mine tore his knee up walking to practice, stepped in a damn hole on the practice field, a hole, cause and tore his damn knee up. I don't think he ever played again. Anyway, let's finish this up. On this day in 1971, ABC TV aired Brian's song, the movie about Chicago Bears, Brian Piccolo, and his friendship with Gail Sayers. On this day in 1983, the Denver Nuggets coach, Doug Moe, 
hopelessly behind, advises the team to let Portland, the Portland Trailblazers, break their scoring record. Put that on the poll, Renee. Another poll question here. Uh, would it be acceptable for you as a fan if your team was to allow another team to break a record against your team? However you want to phrase that. Uh, on this day in 1991, in the, in the first Women's World Cup in soccer, the U.S. team defeated Norway 2-1. to one. Oh, I got some stuff on this too, man. Like Me and Renee had it out about this a while back. About these chicks, and it was on 60 Minutes, I think, the other day. They suing. They about to sue the soccer federation for their money. Like, they getting paid, like, pennies on the dollar to the to the dudes, and they better. And they make more money. They make the, the organization more money. Like, I, I propose, don't be trying to get equal money. Get more. That's the world, that's the society that we live in. You're more valuable. You get paid more money. Don't sell yourself short, ladies. On this day in 1993, finally, the NFL awarded the league's 30th franchise to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Or Jaguars, wherever you're from. And ladies and gentlemen, it is your hump day edition of On This Day. Slavery ended in, is that in 18, 1863? Oh, they just made it. The softball thing just made it past slavery. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what's funny? When I, when I say that slavery ended, I mean, I mean the 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 transcontinental american version of slavery because for those of you who don't know let me be the one to tell you that there are people in this world in this country that are slaves right now straight up and i'm not even i'm not joking i'm not playing i'm not saying like i'm not talking about you at your job and none of that no i mean like real life like slavery is going on in this country and this world right now, and it's it's a it's a problem. You understand? Which you can assume, <laughs> yeah, slavery is a problem, especially in 2017. So when I make the statement like slavery ended, and I just kind of blanket it like that, I know you guys know what I'm talking about, but I just I hear myself saying and understanding that slavery hasn't ended. You know, it's like for a lot of people, it's still a real real thing. Um, all right, let's wrap up this uh, NFL conversation real quick, and we'll move on to uh, the the NCAA. Uh, tomorrow night, we've got the Cowboys and the Vikings. Cowboys man riding a ten game winning streak, going for number eleven. Is it eleven or twelve? They ain't lost the game since the first one. Let me just say that they lost the first game. Um, a lot of people think that was a winnable game if Terrence Williams would have ran run out of bounds, excuse me, run out of bounds, and then allowed them to set up for a field goal. But uh, you know, you've seen these damn kickers. <laughs> Nothing's guaranteed. So they lost one game. They got got to play the Vikings that started off as the last undefeated team. And then the shoe drop, people realized that uh, that offensive line was garbage. Sam Bradford is just Sam Bradford. They can't run the ball. They don't have no pass catchers. When they know all about that, her man Stephon Diggs bowed out of the game last week, giving her a big zero in fantasy football. Um, so, yeah, I don't – they they, they trying to, like, pump it up because it's Thursday night as one of those uh, – it's, it's the immovable force versus the immovable object or whatever it is, however the saying goes, because the, the defense they play in Minnesota is real. That front, uh, some of those damn them DBs they got, yeah, it's real. Anthony Barr and those cats, yeah, it's real versus the offensive line, that real, real good young offensive line of uh, the Dallas Cowboys with Ezekiel Elliott you know, toting the rock behind him and then Dak Prescott distributing the football. But, yeah, it, the the reason that this Thursday night game is probably gonna be better than the rest because both of these teams played last Thursday, so no one's having no one's getting a, an advantage of playing a short week or nothing like or having to travel and any of those things. So we can get a full week between the last time these two teams played. So it should be a, a fairly decent game. The other thing coming out of the NFL is that the um, the NFL is considering. Well, we heard this the other day too, but possibly considering doing something about the start time. As it relates to those London games, you know those London games start so damn early in the damn morning. Ain't nobody trying to get up for that, and especially if you're on the West Coast, who's trying to wake up at six o'clock in the morning to watch the Jaguars in London? Yeah, everyone voting no. So apparently they're gonna try to move the time up so it can sync up a little bit better with the time. I don't know what time it is in London. You know, maybe it may just be a regular one o'clock in London. So maybe talking about moving the game up some to allow you know the game to fit in more with. The, the the regular NFL schedule. Like, the NFL is really getting beat up with these ratings, man. It, it's They really kind of taking a hit, and they trying to figure stuff out, but still not 
still not concede to like, look, man, football is an American thing, man. It's, it's just what it is. Like people can go keep people can be in other places in the world and appreciate it. But football is never going to have the appeal that it has here. And try to like force it down people's throats. I don't like that's not a to me. That's not a winning recipe for anything. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, ladies. <laughs> and never want it forced down your throat at all. Huh? Um, and finally, Darren Sharper. You guys remember Darren Sharper, safety out of William & Mary, played a bunch of years with the Packers and the Vikings. Uh, oh, also raped a bunch of broads, too. Drugged and raped a bunch of broads, so that happened. Uh, he just got his 20-year sentence and plea deal for all the drugging and raping broads that he did. Um, don't really have a lot to talk about with that story. It pretty much is what it is. Darren Sharper drugged broads, and then he raped them. Yeah, and apparently one of his boys was with him or whatever. I, we did this story a while ago when it was happening because there was so much going on around us. Do you realize that <laughs> this is the crazy part about this whole Darren um, Sharper thing, that they can't keep him out of the hall, that this this doesn't keep him from being eligible for the Pro Football Hall of Fame because the rules explicitly say that they can't do that. They can't take someone's personal. It has to be about just football. You know, because Lawrence Taylor's crackhead and Michael Irvin's cokehead or whatever, too. Uh, they was accused of tying up him and Eric Williams. They was accused of tying up bras in the, in the basement of the crib or whatever. Yeah, they can't keep none of that into <laughs> – they can't put none of that into consideration when it comes to Darren Sharper's Hall of Fame eligibility. And the fact of the matter is numbers, statistics, and all those things say the man probably is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, you talk about moral dilemma. But you know what, too? The way I feel about those Hall of Fames and all that kind of stuff, it is what it is, man. It's a museum. It's a story. And everyone everyone that's in, let's say, the, the, Smith, the Smithsonian Museum, everybody's in those damn museums ain't good people. Uh, let's start with the slave owners <laughs> and work our way forward. You know what I mean? So for, like, baseball and football to act like our Hall of Fames need to be pristine. You a lie? You damn lie. Half the people in the baseball hall of fame is racist. Remember that whole we ain't gonna let no niggas play in this league type thing? Remember that? Yeah, so for you now to be talking about steroids, yeah. Yeah, steroids take a big back seat to uh, to to segregation cause Jim Crow and all that. Anyway, this is the one Mike with Big Mike show here on Spreaker.com. I'm also on the Spreaker app. And on TuneIn, and of course, one mic with big mic.com live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7 o'clock. Um, you can also get the show on demand, and every show that I've done on demand, as well as the interviews that I've done on all four of those outlets, as well as on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and follow and all those things. Um, check me out on Facebook, like the Facebook page, too, where I'm streaming live video right now. I'm at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I am no doze It's commenting on what I just said. He said Michael Irvin was kept out for for the longest longest for his off field transgressions. Yeah, they do it, but the rules explicitly say you see no one no one admitted to doing it. That's just the perception that we all have, and we all know that happened. Chris Carter the same way. Uh, the reason that uh, Terrell Owens wasn't the first rounder, I mean first rounder, first ballot Hall of Fame guy. All those things are true. That yeah, these these nerdy pencil pushing ass writers hold these grudges against these. Well, I think it's a grudge against uh, uh, Terrell Owens. Like he never did anything illegal. That was Michael Irvin that did. You know, he did his dirt, and Chris Carter was on the cocaine and and, and the liquor too. Um, so they they kept those dudes out. But the 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 rules as they're written, and I've read them. They say you, you you're not allowed to do that as a voter. You're not allowed to take someone's personal uh, personal business. Paraphrasing into consideration as far as them being a Hall of Famer or not. Uh, what up, Big L? Big L's in the chat room. As I'm about to mention here, you guys can join them in there as well. Just go Spreaker, Spreaker app, or my website, one mic with big mic.com. You'll see that little thought bubble on the streaming player. Go ahead and click on that. It'll get you right up inside this joint. Um, also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at one mic with big mic. Text the show at 404-902-8104. Or uh, leave your comments below this uh live streaming video i got popping on the old facebook live situation one mic with big mike on facebook okay so college football the playoff situation is going on let me let me pull up my my rankings here so i can tell you guys what's going on michigan dropped to four 
We know Alabama's one. We know Ohio State is two. That will leave uh, Clemson at three. And looky, 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 looky. There's Washington sitting there at number four. They got the they got the uh, Pac-12 championship jumping off on on uh, Friday. Got the other championship game games going on on Saturday. I'm not even trying to entertain, but probably a quarter of that that Bama Florida situation at all, at all, at all. Um, the number two team in the country, Ohio State, will not play. They will not play for a championship. That's the same thing for same thing for uh, number five, Michigan. They will not play for a championship on Sunday. Yet, both of these teams possibly could wind up in the final four. There could possibly be three big ten teams in the final four, the college football final four. You say, Mike, get your ass out of here. How? How is that going to happen? All right, I'm going to tell you how it's going to happen. Um, no big L. Wisconsin's number six, my man. That's going that's going to make things a little bit more hairier. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, okay, Alabama, like if they don't even show up to the game against Florida, they're going to be in the playoffs, right? Then you got Ohio State. They sitting there at number 2. They won't play for a championship. They also lost to Penn State. Uh barely squoke, squoke. I did that the other day, didn't I? Squeak past Michigan State a couple weeks ago and needed double overtime to beat Michigan a couple of weeks ago. So, while, you know, this best team in the country thing kind of surrounded Ohio State for a while, the last couple of weeks have shown us a little something different, that they are very, very, very vulnerable. Then you got number three, Clemson. Clemson had their slip up against, against Pitt. Allowed. You know, they started off the season as like number two anyway, right? Two and one, something like that in, in both polls, in one of the other polls. So, yeah, they allowed that slip up against Pitt. And since then, they've kind of found their footing a little bit. You know, uh, the resume may not be – that hot because of course it's the ACC team and now they got to go play Virginia Tech I can't remember seeing Virginia Tech play since the beginning of the season I think I saw opening opening weekend I saw Virginia Tech play and so I don't know a lot about what Virginia Tech is bringing to the table um because I don't know what their or what the likelihood is that they can come out of there with a win but let's say they do let's say they beat Clemson Clemson's out that's two wins that's two losses to two sub two to two subpar teams, if I can get it out of my mouth, a Virginia Tech squad and a damn a pit squad. So they're out. That leaves us with Washington, right? Washington, I I know I say this every week, damn near. But look, if if y'all, man, if y'all get a chance to watch Washington on Friday, take the opportunity. And then they play Colorado. Colorado's got that that uh, Samoan or Polynesian kid playing quarterback. I don't know his name because he got one of those like Palomalu-type names that don't really stick to my memory. He's a good player, though. They got a good team in Colorado. They've gone from uh, worst to first in that Pac-12 South. So this is a very losable game is what I'm getting to. It's a very losable game for Washington. So let's say they lose. So now I've given you the scenario now. Clemson and Washington has lost. So where are we sitting at? Michigan sitting right there, number five. Let's keep it real, man. We just got to talk about what the NFL, how the NFL feels about their ratings and all that stuff. You think these college football people – Ain't looking at ratings. I mean, ain't trying to see like what's the story. Like, what could be a better? This ain't this ain't Michigan. I mean, excuse me, Alabama, Penn State. I'm excuse me, Alabama, LSU from a few years ago, where people was like, I don't know if I really want to see that again because the game was so defensive and you know, the quarterback play was horrible in the game, the first game. People will probably sign up for this Ohio State Michigan thing part two, especially with all the drama that came behind it with Harbaugh. Uh, and and and, and the, the the spotting of the football and some of the calls on the pass interferences interferences. So there is some incentive for the selection committee if both of these teams above Michigan lose to throw them in there. Um, this article that I have here in front of me says if one of those teams lose, first two teams, uh, they finish third. In, oh, speaking of no, Michigan would still be third. How crazy is that? No matter what happens in the Big Ten in the Big uh the Big Ten Championship, Michigan will still be third. Um in the last games of the season, Wisconsin and Penn State, uh the winner would leapfrog Michigan. So meaning whoever wins that game 
most likely you would think would leap, leapfrog Michigan, it, whether it be Wisconsin or Michigan. That's the, I mean, Wisconsin or Penn State. Now that's the thing with having Penn State or Wisconsin sitting there at number six instead of seven. I was thinking that maybe they give that 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 uh, maybe they give that that uh, Ohio State win a little bit more weight, and the, the rankings will be flip flop. See, because Big L checked in, and Big L said Penn State is number six. I'm looking at this thing from uh, Yard Barker. has number six Wisconsin sitting here. Uh, Michigan is ranked ahead of both Wisconsin and Penn State, but, of course, that could change when whoever wins the uh, the championship. Now, Wisconsin's two losses, my, reminding you, were against Ohio State and Michigan in consecutive weeks, but by only seven points. They beat a Nebraska team that showed up pretty good this year, and they beat an LSU team at the beginning of the season that everybody thought was going to be uh, the challengers to Alabama out there in the SEC West. Then you got Penn State sitting at number seven. They beat Ohio State, like I mentioned before, but they got it pushed all the way in by, <laughs> by that Michigan squad, 49-10. to 10. So that you would think that would kind of serve more to the benefit of, of a Michigan squad. And then let's not forget, like the, 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 the name of this episode is, Do You Know Who the F I Am?, like, that's pretty much what, what Michigan, now, it related to more of the Eric Dickinson conversation, but Michigan, if they look at a situation where Penn State wins, these are two both pretty storied franchises, but you can't deny, you can't deny the Urban Meyer, Jim Harbaugh re- rematch this year, too. <laughs> like, like, not even have to wait till the end of next year to get it again, to get it immediately. Like, that has a sense of appeal, if you feel what I'm saying. And these people in this, in this committee, in this room, they're, they're human beings, man. And they understand the business. They understand the business of ratings. And that's why everybody's talking about using Alabama. This is the crazy thing I've heard. People using Alabama as the, the, the litmus test as to who should get in. So if you're telling me I'm going to put Penn State in instead of Michigan, Penn State has a better chance of beating Alabama, well, wait a minute. <laughs> that's, like, Alabama shouldn't have nothing to do with it. Yeah, they're the best team in, in in college football far and away. But do your gig, because if they weren't if they weren't the best team far and away, you still have to do your gig and put four teams in. Quit all that crap about six teams or eight teams and all that kind of ridiculousness. Stop, because all that all that's going to happen is the same thing that's happening now. Remember when there was only two teams in the BCS and everybody was like, "What about number three and maybe number four? Well, that's the same thing that's going to happen now. You got four teams, you're going to be hollering about number five. And number six, you put six teams in and give the first two a bye or whatever, you're going to be hollering out. It's going to be the same problem just on a bigger level. No one, everybody's not going to be happy. You want to be in the you want to be in the top four? Be Alabama. Beat everybody on your schedule and be in the top five conference. Don't want to hear nothing about no Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, none of them. Nope. West Virginia, nope, I'm good. Uh, people are going to be talking about if Colorado can win. The Pac-12 championship, maybe put them in. They're they're, they're champion of a Pac-12 of, of the Pac-12. Wrong, hell no. <laughs> you know what I mean, win your games, and then start complaining about being left out of something. Till then, I'm good. Four teams is enough for these kids to be not getting paid, doing it for free. Nah, don't don't keep trying to pile on games, man. Making millions and billions of dollars, and you ain't breaking no bread to the workforce. Don't think I forgot, man. This college football turns me into a hypocrite. It does. You know, don't, but don't think I forgot. I sit here and watch this crap every weekend, on hours on end, every Saturday to be able to come back and talk about it on Monday and Wednesday and whatever. But don't, don't think I forgot the, 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 about the exploitation that's going on right in front of our face. So um, the rest of the top ten before I take this break here, and I see uh, W. Ernie. I was going to call him WEGA Radio. I see you, Ernie. What up, big dog? Uh, he's checking in in the chat room. You guys can join him in there if you like. You got to be listening via Spreaker, the Spreaker app, or my website, one mic with bigmike.com. And then click on that little thought bubble icon you see on the streaming player. Um, Wrapping up the top 10, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Then you got uh, number 11, USC. Be looking out for USC next year, man. They, they come in, USC and Penn State coming off those sanctions. They coming back. You know what I mean? Shout out to, uh, I'm going to call him Derek Mason. Derek Mason took his job. What's my man's name at Penn State? Crap, I can't even remember his name. But either way, 
We're going to take a quick break here, and then we're going to come back and talk some NBA stuff. Not really NBA all the way, but this situation with Al Horford is kind of crazy, and it is our question of the day. So you guys who just stepped in the chat room, uh, the Lion Sports Talk podcast, what up to you, homie? Um, I'm asking, how do you feel about paternity leave for, your, for, for the star player of your favorite team? In a regular season game, you, know, you feel me? Like, if your man is just like, I got to go be with wifey, and, you know, the Hawks are playing, I don't know, Charlotte tonight. And I don't know who's the star. Dwight Howard, he got plenty of kids, don't he? He got a miss to go see one of his kids born. Do you care or not? You know what I mean? Is that, is that a big deal? Should dudes be just, just able to be like, look, I'm bouncing without anybody, you know, without anybody saying the damn thing. So that's our question of the day today. It's brought to us by sportsnewsandbrews.com. So I'll come back, get into that a little bit, and see what else I got here on these notes. I made up my mind that I'm not going I'm not going to press myself. James Franklin, thank you, I am no dose. Press myself to do two hours when I don't have a lot. It's Wednesday, man. Ain't a lot to talk about today. I'm not talking about no damn college basketball this early in the season. Why would I? It's college basketball, for God's sake. Anyway, it's the One Mike with Big Mike Show. We're going to take a quick break here, come back, and continue the foolery right here. On our Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app. Tune in and, of course, one mic with big I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mic with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mic with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at one mic with big Mike.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one mic. Dear John, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you've left me no choice. I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is really serious, and lately you seem to really not care. I've been there for you since day one, and I know you think I'm going to keep ticking. But no, my friend, I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to the good times when we were more active and ate more healthy foods and you checked on me every once in a while? Is that too much to ask? I don't want to leave, but unless you stop ignoring me, what else am I supposed to do? Remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart and don't let it quit on you. Doing the minimum to control your high blood pressure isn't doing enough. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. For help keeping yours at a healthy range, text PRESSURE to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. One mic. What's the name of the show? One mic with Big Mike. You know, ain't nobody getting hurt, ain't nobody, you know, there's no no crime being committed. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. This is real life stuff that's happened to me. Well, you know what? One mic with Big Mike. I like to be able to do what I want to do. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limits. Sneak Mills concert is not called the Hell Yeah, I Bang Chloe Kardashian concert. And now, your host. Put your hands together for the one, the only, Big Mike. 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 All I need is one mic. Palm Day. Right here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. Damn right, it is a hump day. We're getting over this hump. One hour down, maybe one to go, depending on how much more stuff I got to talk about. I'm being heard right now via Spreaker.com, right now and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, as well as on TuneIn and the One Mike with Big Mike.com website. You guys can also catch every show that I've ever done going back to uh, last November. You can catch them joints on. Uh, all four of those outlets. You can also catch them on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music. And you can catch the video and audio to this joint. If you're one of those people who like to watch, mm-hmm, you can catch the uh, video version of the stream that I'm doing right now on the Facebook page. You can catch the, the on-demand version on YouTube. You can catch me live right now at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. If you want to be a part of the show, text me. At 404-902-8104. You can also leave some comments below this live streaming video as well. Oh, also, make sure you guys subscribe, man. Subscribe to all my YouTube and TuneIn and iTunes, iHeartRadio and all that kind of stuff. Uh, as well as sign up for your own free Spreaker account. That way you can uh, follow me, One Mike with Big Mike, on Spreaker and get alerts every time uh, the show goes live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, again, you guys can jump on in this live interactive chat room. You see that little thought bubble? 
on the streaming player. If you're listening via Spreaker, the app, or my website, just click on that. You'll be up in here. The homie Ernie Abbott's in this joint. I am No Doze, the uh, Line Sports Talk podcast. Big L, Renee, everybody's checking in, man. So it is what it is. Uh, I told you guys when I got back, I was going to talk about this paternity leave situation, but I forgot I had some more college football stuff to talk about. Like, my man, <laughs> my man heard paternity leave. Uh, 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 the Line Sports Talk was like, paternity leave? Nope. <laughs> that's, the, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's like that. That's like that 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 man stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like that. Hell no, nah. I'm the breadwinner. Hell, I need some damn. Pater- I ain't dropped no damn baby. Man, I'm going to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? It's a different day and age, man. It's time. Uh, like when when it comes to to equality, man, equality just don't work when it's in your favor, or not necessarily in your favor, but just because if you're a woman, you know, there's sometimes or like now, I think the population of uh, the population of College educated black women has succeeded by far. College educated black men, and you all know, like the way the way the economy is going and jobs are going, jobs are more uh, are more more readily available for people with college education and college graduates. So the the paradigm is kind of shifting, in like with a lot of things, you know, your your mentality kind of has to kind of shift with it, shift with it as well, as well. But before I get too deep into that. And by the way, that is our question of the day brought to us by sportsnewsandbrews.com. But you guys can uh, you guys can answer in a variety of different ways by text 404-902-8104. You can answer them on Facebook, facebook.com backslash one mic with big mic. Just do it under the streaming video or you can jump on in this live interactive chat room and holler at me there. Uh, we want to know your your team that you tr- that you root for. If you root for a team and the star player, one of the star players on your team needs to be out. He needs to bounce, man. And go take care of his wifey. She having, you know, she having a seed or whatnot, and you know, he's got to go do that thing. How you feel about it? And I got a story in, in relation to that here coming up. But before I get into that, I told you guys I want to talk to you guys about the coaching situation that's going on in college football too. Not just not necessarily just the playoff situation, but Oregon fired their coach Helfrick. Helfrick is that his name? Mark Helfrick. After four years, he he came in. He was on the staff with Chip Kelly. He was his offensive coordinator. So. It seemed right to just be like, yo, man, we're going to keep this thing going. Everything's going good up here at Oregon and Eugene. Let's just keep this thing moving. Uh, they did it, and it, it kept moving. They ended up in the college, the first college football playoff finals, got it pushed in. But, you know, whatever, things happen, right? Then Marcus Mariota left, <laughs> and then they had to find a quarterback. They went and got, the, got that kid from, like, Eastern Washington, the 1AA kid. He played all right. Started off slow for him. He broke his finger, then came back. And I played well after the, the finger healed up or whatnot. Um, so they were still kind of there and relative and, and, you know, relevant, I should say. And then this year, they just fell off the damn map. I think they won four games this year. Yeah, that ain't going to really do the, do the trick. You know, again, in an in industry where it's all about what? Where it's all about freaking production. If you don't produce, man, they're going to find somebody else. Because Cass is coming in to programs and flipping them joints immediately. Jim Harbaugh. Uh, for whatever you think about that, that situation in Florida, Think about it, man. McIlwain, like the second straight SEC East title. Like Cass is flipping things around very, very quickly when they get in when they get in these jobs. So if you got a job that you feel like it's a high profile situation and the coach ain't getting it done, you you moving on. Now I saw a list of candidates that I wanted to wanted to share with you guys that it's it's kind of peculiar. And I want you guys to to listen kind of closely to this. You know, this this list of, of people who were expected to be candidates. You know, they go get those firms, those hiring firms or headhunters or whatever they call to find proper candidates. So um, down in Mississippi State, Dan Mullen, uh, Larry Fedora out of North Carolina, uh, Willie Taggart, South Florida. Is Willie Taggart a black dude? Because I feel like if I hear the name Willie Taggart, I think black dude. I don't know what South Florida's coach looks like, but I'm going like regionally, South Florida, right? And a dude named Willie it's sounding like a black dude. For example, this this guy is from Boise State. I don't even have to know his name to know that he's a white man. Brian Harson. See what I'm saying? Just kind of fits. Uh, West Virginia's Dana Hogerson. Western Michigan's PJ Fleck. Central Florida's Scott Frost. Scott Frost just got the damn job. See, this is what we was talking about the other day. Like when that when all that damn Charlie Strong stuff was going on, and we were like, you know. Yeah, Charlie Strong got the job done. He about to get his ass fired in the can and all this kind of stuff. And it seems crazy. But the the back end of that story is Charlie Strong's a good ass coach way before then. And it took him a long ass time to get this opportunity that he couldn't turn down. 
Like even though Charlie Strong, his coaching style wasn't fit for what the what the Big Twelve is now. Everybody's opened up. Ain't nobody playing no defense. It's a defensive coach. But how you say no when you waited that long? Scott Frost went from defensive coordinator, excuse me, offensive coordinator, to now head coach at Central Florida. And also while we're on names, yeah, Scott Frost. There will be never, ever, ever a black dude <laughs> with that white of a name, <laughs> Scott Frost. But we know Scott Frost from playing his playing days at Nebraska, the option quarterback. Didn't Scott Frost play a couple years in the league at safety for the Raiders as well? I think he did. Um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. This dude's going from that Central Florida, boom, candidate for <laughs> the Oregon job. I think he was the offensive coordinator at Oregon last year, wasn't he? Okay, I see the tie, but still, cuz, but still, you feel me? Um, and Florida's Jim McElwain is the other name on this list. Here's something that I didn't know till today. And I'm going to bet that a lot of you didn't know this. We always talk about, same thing, going back to the Charlie Strong thing, about there not being a Rooney rule in college football. But here's the thing. In 2009, Oregon, as a state, they kind of adopted a Rooney rule as a state. Like, if you're a state-run school, um, this says, similar to the NFL's Rooney rule, they require all public universities to interview a minority candidate for every open head coaching job. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's kind of like one of those things that kind of flew under the radar. But when we, we sit around and we wonder, like, why the NCAA doesn't do this? Yeah, why didn't the state of Georgia do that? The state of Oregon did that. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't take the NCAA and they slow moving ass to free. What are we doing here? They're slow moving ass to, to, to say, well, you know what? We could do that. But why? Apparently, your state can do that. If the state is funding your damn school, they can tell you, yeah, get some Negroes in here, man. If only for an interview, get them in here. Um, what are we doing? We're naming black coaches? That's what's happening in, in, in the chat room right now? I see Frank Wilson, LSU's running back coach. That could go either way. That could be white or black. Uh, Ernie Abbott, same thing there. Uh, Lion of Washington. <laughs> yeah, no way. That's No way. That's a Caucasian. <laughs> Lionel. Lionel Washington. Is that what we're doing? We're naming black, co- black, hit black coaches. That could possibly get gigs. Okay, I got a couple names too for you guys. Um, so yeah. Um, so one of the things that came up to that I've been meaning to ask uh, uh, Ben Troop about is Lane Kiffin. If you notice, I didn't I didn't say Lane Kiffin's name in that, and I, I wonder like why. Like Lane Kiffin, for whatever he is, he's a pretty damn good coach, and he's not. A criminal, like he wasn't like he didn't do like the the what's my man's name, Bobby Petrino. He wasn't on no junk like that. He just kind of ran into some crazy situations. Uh, the the situation with the Raiders, I don't think he was ready for it. Too young. The situation with with, with USC and Tennessee. He left Tennessee to go to USC. I would have too. <laughs> like look at that program now. When you. Leave Tennessee and you get your blonde, big breasted wife and take her ass to Southern California where she fit right in. Yeah, of course I would. But the thing, the thing is this. Now he's down there putting up crazy numbers. He's changed, he's changed an entire culture at Alabama without anybody even blinking. Like all that three yards and a cloud of dust stuff. And then Nick Saban complaining about, no, they can't run this hurry up stuff. It's going to get my players hurt. And then finally, Cowering down and just being like, you know what? If I can't beat them, I'm going to join them. Lane, bring your ass. Let's do it. <laughs> and then Lane came in there, and they started putting up numbers with dude like, dudes like Blake Sims. Now they got a real quarterback back there. They got it for at least the next two years after this one. That's going to be a problem. But I was thinking to myself, like, why not him? And apparently he's, uh, he's being considered for that Houston job, which, again, see, Houston is in a situation. I heard the AD today crying about my man Tom Herman leaving like, I just don't appreciate what Texas have done. Once again, be better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be better. <laughs> don't be Houston. And get into a Power 5 conference. Because no one's trying to be a, no one's going to have to feel the need to have to go undefeated every year to even get consideration. Now, you won't even necessarily just automatically get in going undefeated and winning the AAC. You get consideration. 
But that's way too much pressure to be putting on 18 and 19 year olds when you ain't got you no know, Alabama talent sitting over there. Hell no. Houston is a stepping stone job. And for a dude like Lane Kiffin, hearing his name being brought up in that, he needs a stepping stone. Like the, the, the situation with Alabama is not a good enough stepping stone, no matter how good he does, because everyone's going to say he has to. You feel me? He has to because uh, uh, Nick Saban is keeping everything in line, and Nick Saban don't let people get out of line. So he's going to have to go somewhere else away from that. He's already been rumored before this to be poached by his man, Ed Orgeron, who they got a long history with, to going over to LSU and taking over that offense and possibly doing the same thing he did for Nick at Alabama. You know, because, of course, that's what LSU needs <laughs> more than anything in this world. Someone to bring some sort of creativity and some quarterback play to that damn uh, to that uh, that LSU offense. So, um, and then there's Baylor. Kind of, you know, you guys know, and you guys have heard my my feelings and my thoughts on that whole Baylor situation and how they they, they just. Uh, I, I really felt, and this is the one time, not the one, but it's one of those rare times where I, I me and Somebody like Paul Feinbaum would agree. Like, they should have just shut that whole situation down. Now, you understand, you know, money, college football, big time business. Of course, you know, most people ain't going to volunteer for doing that. But if you're trying to be this, I'm we so Christian school, do the right thing, man. These kids trying to tell me that, you know, we got 80 something kids and the majority of them are good kids. Yeah, the majority of them had on support Art Brow shirts, too, because the dude that was covering up gang rapes, <laughs> you feel me? Not reporting them to the police. What am I looking at? My bad, y'all. Georgetown playing some basketball team. They beating them 91 to 38. Come on, man. Who signed up for that? Like, oh, that that's what's hot in the streets? Dude's getting beat by 400 points in, in a college basketball game? Cool. I'm good. Um, so anyway, the Baylor job is open, right? And the name that came up is a name that I was talking about last year. And one that apparently my man Ernie is running down Negro coaches in my chat room right now. And you guys can join the chat room and check this out right now. Um, go to Spreaker or to my uh, to the Spreaker app or to the website, one mic with big There'll be a little thought bubble there. Click on that joint and. Uh, you'll get inside the live interactive chat room. You can see all the names that he's posting here. Uh, you can also get in touch with the show by texting me at 404-902-8104 or leave comments below my streaming video on my Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com backslash the number one M-I-C W-I-T-H-B-I-G M-I-K-E. Now, let me say this, though, because we're talking about black coaches now. I'm on the Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary is a guy, if you guys don't know Mike Singletary outside of Mike Singletary, the football coach or the guy, or the, the linebacker for the 85 Bears. Mike Singletary is a big time, like, he's a Bible, he's a Bible toter, you know, Jesus freak. He's one of those dudes. And if you don't know about Baylor, Baylor is like, is it like the first Baptist college in the United States? Something to that effect. Um, it's something to, it has some sort of standing within the Baptist community. Um, and Mike Singletary is a Baylor alum. And, you guys know he's one of those guys who feels the need to not only coach football but to make a difference. This is why he set, sent Vern Davis to the locker room and went into the locker room and pulled his pants down and told people he'll play with 10. You know, I just want winners. Like, he's that type of guy. And right now, he's the type of guy that school needs. He's, I don't believe he's the type of guy they want because they still want to win. They've tasted that blood of winning and being, being talked about in the, in, the, in the national conversation as far as their football team goes. We saw what happens to a black coach that, that goes in, Charlie Strong, goes in and tries to change the culture, right? He, wa he wanted to go in, got rid of a couple dudes, the same kind of dudes that were allowed to play at Baylor. These, 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 these guys who uh, get caught up in these sexual assault type, uh, type of deals. Charlie Strong was like, no, nah, you got to get the hell out of here. And you MFers need to go to class. I'm going to make sure you go to class and all that kind of stuff. But in doing so, you can't necessarily focus as much as you want to on football. And to, to, in, to instill that kind of culture at a place like Texas is going to take time for the turnover to take place. Charlie Strong didn't have time from the time he got there. He didn't have time. 
So I feel, I'm looking at the same thing with Mike Singletary. Now, Mike Singletary, again, is in a different situation. Why? Because he was an, he's an alum of the school. So they may buy him a little bit of cachet. But in the end, he's going to have to win football games if, in fact, he does uh, get the job. And not only win football games, it's a cleanup job to be done, man. It's a PR job to be done there. There's a culture, a culture of sexual assault and rape on that campus as well as on that football team and within that football program, in the athletic program, top to bottom. The AD knew about them. These women went and sent emails, paper trail of people, to the AD, the coach. Like, look, this stuff happened. Other administrators told coaches that their players were involved in certain things. Nothing. Want to know why? We got to win football games. So it's a, it's a, it's a mighty road to hoe. Um, so let me, let, me add, let me add to my man, Ernie's list here. You know I mean, oh God! See, this is what <laughs> this is what we on now. <laughs> I am no those. Baylor let Brittany Griner come in. They bought they bought winning ball games over the Bible. Like what is like? How does Brittany Griner? Like what? <laughs> like I don't understand. Like what the correlation is between letting Brittany Griner come in, come in, and not being about the Bible. <laughs> You're an idiot, dude. <laughs> You're an idiot. Um. So I did this last year. I'm gonna do it again this year too, because I think of all the names, I try to keep up with the names you put up here, uh, uh, Ernie. Uh, and a lot of names I don't know. And here's the thing about that too: when when you talk about black coaches or, and getting an opportunity, they got to be coaches with credentials and be ready. They, just being black ain't gonna, ain't, ain't gonna be good enough. Because if you're just black and you get a job, you'll be just black and getting fired from a job in a year. You know what I mean? And as we, we talked about, I talked about it with my man Cato June last last uh, week about the pressure, the pressure that's on a black coach uh, to not only be a good coach. You know, white, white coaches come in, you got to be a good coach. Black coaches come in, you got to be a good black coach. You got you to put uh, black coaches on your staff, you know, because who else will give them the opportunity? You got to win. You got you to be the, the consummate steward of the of the of the uh the university and you can't fail because as soon as you do you you put an excuse you know not intentionally of course but an excuse gets to be made now like look what happened to the last time look what happened last time we tried out one of these negroes see what i'm saying so that pressure and tony dungy talked about it tony dungy was like i have to win because if i win somebody else you know later on it became a mike tomlin it became a raheem morris these guys get interviews if I if I do good, that's a lot of pressure, and that's pressure that white coaches will never ever ever know. Oh yeah, see Brittany Gar- <laughs> Brittany Griner went about like she won. I don't think she was openly gay when she got there. I think at her it was at her uh, at her press conference, her WNBA press conference is when everybody. Or no, before that she did an interview, and uh, is when she uh, just kind of like casually talked about her girlfriend or something of that nature, and everybody was like, "Oh my God, Brittany Griner is gay." Like, really? <laughs> I mean, I would have been more surprised if she'd be like, man, I'd be running these dudes. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so I talked about Mike Singletary, uh, 49ers head coach at one time. He's coaching with the – we'll see him tomorrow, coaching linebackers for the Vikings tomorrow. He's a Baylor alum. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a notable name to, to alumni. You know, he's a guy that even the white alumni would want to – you know, rub elbows with in, 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 in situations like that. He got his, his Super Bowl ring. So he comes to the table with, with credentials, but he still comes to the table with that black ass skin. You know what I mean? And people, as we've seen in Penn State, my man, people are real quick and easy to forget about sexual transgressions. Kids getting raped, whatever. Are we going to win this Big, tw- this Big Ten championship or what? <laughs> you know what I mean? They real easy to forget about that kind of stuff. So in the same light, they'll do the same thing with Mike Singletary, but in a negative light. They'll forget all about he came in here because they did it with Charlie Strong. They forgot about all that crap Mac Brown left behind. They did it with President Obama. <laughs> Let me go ahead and bring that out too because, you know, when, when, when Obama got, got, uh, got, got sworn in, it's like George Bush never existed. Nothing happened before Obama got there. Nothing good or nothing, nothing bad happened before Obama got in the office. And that's one of the things that society is placed on just black men in power, especially when they follow a, a, a white man's failure. And that's what's going to happen. If Mike Singletary is that dude, he's following that. And then 
whatever comes after Mike Singletary, positive or ne- like if 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 the positive come, oh hell yeah, he'll be a god. But if the negative come, because they don't even have no recruits, <laughs> I think they had like like kids won't even kids and their parents ain't even signed up to go to Baylor right now. That's the other battle he's gonna have to fight. You understand what I'm saying? So like he'll get there, the team will be I don't know five and five or something, barely make a bowl game. And they'll be talking about how Mike Singletary need to get his act together and get his players on board. <laughs> yeah, dude. Remember, you heard that here. If this dude gets hired down there. Um, another guy. A guy that we kind of just forget about, right? Randy Shannon. Everybody remembers Randy, right? Randy from the University of Miami. He was another guy. Local dude down there. Was down there forever and ever and ever. Cared about the community and the school and wanted everything to be right. Wanted kids to get their grades. Wanted kids to get degrees. And he didn't want Miami just to be this football factory. But guess what? Didn't matter. He didn't win enough games. So his black ass had to go. You know what I'm saying? This is what we're talking about, man. We're talking about how do you, being in those, in those quote unquote lose lose situations. Because if you go in there, win a bunch of football games, like think about this. Think about how many kids under Nick Saban have been arrested every offseason. It happens, then it goes away. Some kids get suspended. Some kids get to continue to play. It's at his discretion. And anytime somebody asks him about it, he shut them down immediately at the press conference. You think and you think for one damn minute, my man in Vanderbilt, Penn State, Lovey up there in Illinois, you think they can pull that crap? Hell no. No matter how many games they win. Dudes start getting suspended and locked up and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, they're going to be talking about institutional control and all kind of foolishness. This is real stuff, man. So Randy Shannon, I don't know if I just mentioned that, but Randy Shannon's down there coaching linebackers at the University of Florida, and they they down there knocking heads, man. If only they had a freaking glimpse, a semblance of freaking offense. It'll look so much better. Um, then T. Martin. We all know T. Martin, SEC country, the kid – who actually won a national championship at the University of Tennessee. No, my white brethren and sistren, it was not Peyton Manning. <laughs> it wasn't him. It was this black kid named T, yeah, who won the, uh, the national championship for the University of Tennessee down there. He is now USC's offense coordinator. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, yeah, USC's back on the rise. They're back on the come up. And T. Martin's a big part of that. So, you know, he's a guy who's going to be, his name is going to be mentioned in some of these head coaching jobs now. And it'll serve him right, because if you notice, man, a lot of these black coaches, and this is something that I brought up a couple months ago when I was having this conversation, a lot of these black coaches, they come from the defensive side of the football field. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, you know, you know Team Martin from the Brady Six as well. Damn right. Um, uh, you, like a lot of these black coaches come from the defensive side of the football where everything is turning offense. The rules of the game are turning offensive. The, the strategies, everything's turning offensive. You know what I mean? The situation down there in Baylor, that's what they kind of cut their teeth on, that offense, that air raid style of offense. So it makes it harder a lot of times or it, it builds in a little bit of an excuse, feel me, for these ADs and these boosters to be like, nah, we don't want that black dude in here. He coaches defense, doesn't he? And – the setup was on from the from the beginning with Charlie Strong in the same way. You know what I mean? Charlie Strong was a guy who prided himself on playing some some good ass defense, coaching uh, down at the University of Florida. Uh, where else was he before that? I just had this in my mind the other day. Anyway, he's a defensive coach. Put him in a situation where dudes got to score like 40, 50 points a game to win. It's like the square peg in the round hole, man. So that's another thing to watch out for when you start when we start talking about these black coaches and and shout out to you Ernie for doing that too for putting all you know I know I'm an idiot now and I, uh, I no I said what is this uh, what is this game called name a black coach but yeah because a lot of times the, the Stephen A Smith people of the world who want who want to make everything a race thing will just holler out and say some stuff like I know it's got to be plenty of black coaches out there and can't name a one and won't name a one. That ain't enough. You know, let people know. I mean, if you got you got a, you got a platform, let it be known. Uh, the Line Sports Talk podcast is saying, with, oh, Will Muschamp. Yeah, he, Will Muschamp 
is like the Jeff Fisher of college football. <laughs> this dude, <laughs> this dude left for a year coaching Florida. Like if you were my age, I'm about to be 40 years old. If you were my age, you know what the University of Florida was at one point. You understand? Heisman Trophy winners coming out that joint. Speed for days. Next thing you know, he gets fired, goes down to Auburn, burns that ship down, and then, boom, he's at South Carolina, another SEC school. It is good to be white, homie. (laughs) It is that. (laughs) I know that for real. Anyway, let's take a quick break here. I told you guys I wanted to come back, and uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about also some NBA stuff. We got to get into this conversation about Al Horford because my man has already said, uh, who, which one of y'all wanted to say that? Was that the line sports talk? Was like, hell no, no damn paternity leave. <laughs> and um, that that is our question of the day. Is brought to us by sportsnewsandbrews.com. That uh, Al Horford had to bounce. You know what I mean? He had to bounce, go take care of his, his old lady. She's having his baby, his second child in, uh, in about a year. He's got a one-year-old boy. Now he got him, got him a little girl. And uh, one one particular sports talk host had a problem with up in Boston. And I want to know from you guys, like, what did your take on your favorite team's star player bouncing on the team, man, to go take care of life business, you know, the real stuff, take care of his old lady and his, his brand new baby. So we'll come back on the other side of a break and talk about that and then get the hell out of here on this hump day right here on the One Mike with Big Mike show, Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app. Tune in or One Mike with Big Mike.com is where you're probably hearing me. Be sure to get in touch with the show by texting me at 404 404- 902-8104, jumping inside my live interactive chat room. Or you guys can just leave your comments below the live streaming video that's going on right now on Facebook.com backslash the number one M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Well, I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at One Mike with Big Mike dot com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one mic. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And now back to One Mike with Big Mike. And here we go! Damn it. All the people on Facebook heard me. I know those, but appreciate it. So anyway, I've been back here for a couple of minutes now, and the damn mic button uh, 
pressed it twice and turn it on and turn it back off. So anyway, back here on the hump day, Spreaker.com, the app, tune in, one mic with big mic.com. Also, check me out on demand on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and YouTube. I'm streaming live video on the Facebook page, one mic with big mic. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. One mic with Big Mike, and I'll text the show at 404-902-8104. You can also leave comments below the live streaming video or in my live interactive chat room. I got my homie, I Am No Doze, the Line Sports Talk podcast is up in this joint. Uh, who else up in here? Big L, Renee, of course. Bernie's up in this. Oh, Ernie, sorry. Ernie's up in this joint as well. You guys can join them. Um, something's going on with this conversation, this paternity test. Con- paternity test. That's the wrong conversation. <laughs> paternity leave <laughs> conversation um renee put it up on the poll and i'm looking at it right now how do you feel if your sports team purposely allowed another team oh no this is a different poll i forgot i said this earlier but anyway i'll give you guys the results how would you feel if your sports team purposely allowed another team to break a record against them in a game uh 70 of you weirdos i'd be livid and 25 percent like me wouldn't give a damn well i don't have a favorite sports team either so i kind of don't qualify but anyway, the question of the day today is we're going to talk about Al Horford, man. Al Horford, former Atlanta Hawk, now Boston Celtic, took some time off. Missed the game because his wife, he was having a baby, having their second child. Uh, and he caught a little criticism for it. This cat up in Boston, I'm not going to say his name because I think it's one of those, those foolish things that people do. People who do this thing, who talking to a mic about sports feel like they got to say the most outlandish, stupid thing in the world. To, to get attention and it works um i'm not built that way i just i say what i believe and not really worry about it um but anyway he missed the game against the heat and he talked about the criticism that he got yeah so my man's like he should have just he should have chartered a plane again spending another man's money that's not a manly thing to do <laughs> at all keep out of, keep out another man's pocket first before you start talking about somebody's business so anyway, he's talking about this cat should um, have chartered a plane and played in the game. Al says, I'm in, a, I'm in a unique situation because this is our first year here and my wife was going through all the moving in the middle of her pregnancy. So it was just not so it was just a lot going on. I just felt like it was important for me to be there for her, supporting her. And we have a son, a one year old, Ian. I think that's Ian, E-A-N instead of the I as well. So it's been. Excuse me. It's been a lot thrown at her these last few months. And I know, excuse me, I know that it meant a lot for her for me to be there. Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, he got his wifey. They moving all the way up the coast. They already got a one year old. and She's got to chase around and all these kind of things. The, I mean, the least he could do is like miss a day at work because like, look at it like look at it that way. Don't look at it in the way of of him missing a game. That's his job. So basically, he took a day off from work, which really, I'm going to keep it real with you, take more, cuz. Like, if you need, it's, it's 82 games. This ain't like football, where, like, you know, it's, it's one game a week. got 82 games. You need to take a couple more, a couple more days to, to, to see about your wife and your fam. Do that, man. This basketball stuff is going to be there, you know, the, especially in the NBA. The contract guaranteed, cuz. <laughs> so, I mean, you could literally kind of act a fool if you wanted to. But no, on, on some serious stuff. You know, this is something that I, I've been paying attention to. This, there's been conversations about this, not only in this country, but around the world about uh, family structure and, and the changes that are going on in society and uh, some, of the, some of the archaic ways that uh, society and people here in America think when it comes to things like paternity leave. Like it's some sort of uh, it's some sort of dishonorable thing. Like if a, if a man's like a stay home dad, like so in some in some way like he's a bitch or something. Like what? What do you mean? He's taking care of his kid. <laughs> I mean, it's like if if that's if that's something that's good with him and his old lady, it should be good with everybody. You guys have heard me say that on this on this show about a, a gamut of things. Like if it's good for you and you find your happiness there. Damn everybody else, because everybody's going to have their little stupid ass opinions about whatever it is that you do. But the reality is, that's all it is, a stupid ass opinion, because most people won't be willing to change, change, uh, uh, put your shoes on. It is what it is. Uh, I am no those saying Joe Flacco missed the birth of his second kid 
uh, to warm up for the Super Bowl. Here's the thing, though. I go back to what I just said. If that's an arrangement that you got with your old lady and she's good with it, because here's the thing, too. As a woman, right, as a woman, the one thing that you don't want to do, if your husband was in the, let, let's, let's let's ramp the question up a little bit then. It's not just a regular season game. It is a Super Bowl. It is the NBA Finals. It is the, the World Series. If you're a woman and that's your guy, and this is something that he's worked his whole life for, and it's not something that can be just duplicated. Like, a game against the Heat, yeah, that's going to be duplicated. <laughs> you get a chance to go back and do that again. Game 7 of the Finals, Super Bowl, Dan Marino went once early in his career and never got back. It's not something that you can duplicate. So if you're if you're the woman in this relationship and you're supportive of your guy, yeah, man, it, it could be mad selfish for you to be like, nope, forget that. You need to be in this damn, damn your Super Bowl. Like if, if that's your lady, you probably married the wrong one too. Let's just keep it real. Like if, if your woman is like, like adamant about nope, you like, I just need you here because – the man being there when a child is born, he ain't doing nothing. It's a bunch of professionals up in here. The doctors here, the nurses up in this. Door. You ain't doing nothing but being a spectator. Now the experience is what it is, and it's just all about how you weigh certain things. You know, if you having your first kid and the Super Bowl's coming, it's like, uh, and you the quarterback of the Super Bowl team, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what do you do? I think, but I think for most women, though, to be honest with you, and Renee's in the chat room, I think for most women, um, the fear, the fear that your man may resent you for making him miss uh, uh, such a, a, a grand opportunity would, would make you suck it up. Because women are strong MFers, man. Like, for those of us who got, like, you know, moms and you got the right woman, you know, man, your woman's a strong, strong mother, you know what I mean? And... Women can endure certain things, and sometimes you might look back. If you like a dude, you look back and like, I don't know how the hell she put up with my ass. I do it all the time. <laughs> I don't know how the hell. I wake up in the morning, she be, she be there. I'm like, damn, she's still here? <laughs> wow. Um, but no, nah, seriously, I, I would think there's a different aspect to it as well. Like if that's, your, if that's something that you've been working for all your life, I don't think your woman would want you to miss it. You know, I think she'd be like, all right, baby, I got it. Especially now. Think about where we're at now. Right? We're in 2016. You got, like, it's MFers that are looking at me right now. I can't see them. So you can kind of virtually be there, but not be there. You know, if all you need to do is be a witness to something or be in the presence of this thing occurring, this thing being birth occurring, there's ways to, to accomplish it based on, you know, the priority of what's going on at the time. A regular season basketball game? Nah. Well, yeah, I'm good. Because the same thing would be true if Al Horford twisted his ankle. He'd have to miss the game. It'd be a health reason he wouldn't be able to play. He probably He's not going to play all 82 games because he's already been hurt this year. Very few people play all 82 games. So in, in the context of it being a regular season game, ah, whatever. You know what I mean? So now the question, let's ramp the, let's ramp the question of the day up now. If the, 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 the star player on your team needed to miss the game, and it's a championship game, whatever, you know, what if it's the what if it's game, the game in week 17 to make the playoffs? What if it's the AFC championship game or, you know, the Super Bowl game seven of the finals or not even just game seven, but a pivotal game of the finals, like how how Draymond got suspended. It was game Draymond missed game six, right? Say Draymond's girlfriend, instead of him being suspended, his girlfriend or his wifey was having a. You know, having the seed on the, when Game Seven happened, the, how would you feel then if if he if he needed to miss the game, a pivotal point, a p- pivotal part of the team that you root for, having to miss the game to be present for life to be for life to be born? I mean, he ain't have he got to be present. The baby gonna come, but you know, just feeling the need to to be there for that moral support more so than being there for his wifey. That's you know. That's kind of a, I don't know. Like I don't get into like moral stuff because when people start talking about morality, morality is based on the individual. You see what I'm saying? Like if some dude has two wives, you know, one of those cats in Utah, or whatever, got two wives. Dude, if you can run it, run it. 
You know what I mean, like that ain't my moral dilemma. If 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 a dude want to stick his penis into another dude, my man, whatever, man, run it. <laughs> you know, same thing with two women, whatever. Like I'm I'm real liberal when it comes to stuff like that because it don't affect my life at all. I do me, and I'm I'm in I'm in pursuit of happiness just like everybody else. And if somebody else can find it in another dude's booty hole, <laughs> my man, <laughs> run it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I won't be there looking for it, but hey. Glad you found it. You dig what I'm saying? So the same thing goes with this 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 thing here. I don't think here's my position on it. I don't think there's a right answer to this question. I don't think there's a wrong answer. To, well, for the per, for the people involved, I don't think you can be right or wrong if you're in this situation. You see what I'm saying? I think it's a matter of what can your situation handle. Could Al Horford have not been there for his wifey? And played in that game? Sure, probably. But then would it, would it have caused stress in his life at the crib? I don't know. And plus, you know, Al, them, them, they, they, they like, uh, what are they? They like Dominican or something, too. You know what I mean? So they like Hispanic folks. Yeah, stuff can get stuff can get rowdy. You know what I mean? When, when things ain't going right in those situations. You know, so. But then again, we, we posed a question about the, the, the Super Bowl thing. You know? And like guys, like see, and then guys, Big L's chiming in. Guys have personal experiences that they get to they get to harken back on. Big L says, "The birth of of his daughter is the biggest day in my life. It was the biggest day in his life. One the big. <laughs> it wasn't the biggest day of my life. Sorry, Big L. It's the biggest day of his life. I was reading it verbatim, but still kind of in some kind of crazy way putting it into context where it involved me. Um, no, we don't need to go to Maury. You all right? Um, but think about it this way. Like for example." A lot of people who do what I do, right? A lot of people who do what I do, uh, their, their, their penultimate, penultimate, in English, goal is to find themselves on ESPN. And then me and my, me and my former co-host, we had this conversation before, right? What if you had an interview for the, for the job of your life on the day that, because you don't, because sometimes you know how the stuff goes. Sometimes you send out. You send out resumes and you send out your, 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 your tape or your, not tape anymore, but you send out your, your demos and things like that. And people call you when they get ready to call you. You understand? It ain't on your schedule. So then what if that situation, let me now bring the, bring, bring the conversation back to like some more uh, relatable things for, for, for people, like, people like us. Like we're not big time athletes and things of that nature. We're just regular people. But then you get an opportunity, the opportunity of a lifetime. But it falls on that same day. You telling me that you would have to miss that for the birth of your child? Again, I don't know what's right or what's wrong. Because the kid is going to be here. You know what I mean, the kid is going to be here when you're done with the interview and hopefully getting the job. But then what are, you, what are your feelings going to be? Say you missed the job. You don't get the job because you couldn't go to the interview and they couldn't reschedule it. You dig what I'm saying? It's like. Those, those type of moral dilemmas are, are the things that when it comes to other people, these folks need to stay out of it, man. You know, these, these radio hosts and all these people who feel like, you know, I've got all the answers. And it ain't just on them. I blame a lot of you SOBs for that. You know what I mean? Giving these people these feelings of, you know, aha, look what you did. You, you, you said the Cowboys was going to win. You know, you want to know a secret? No one knows. Until after it happens, all these people who prognosticate and then they and then they freaking they sit up there and they want to uh, 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 guess who's going to win these games. They don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. There's so many different factors that go into something like a football game that could that could determine the outcome. There's no reason to gloat or to be disappointed when someone gets a prediction wrong. That's why I don't do predictions on this. Show. I think that I think it's antiquated and I think it's just something that people do because it's always been done. It makes no difference. You know, it makes no difference what I think is going to happen in the Falcons game this weekend. I'm not going to tell you what's going I can tell you what each team brings to the table. Yeah, I can do that. But that don't mean I know who's going to win. So anyway, something else that came out of this article about Al Horford. Uh, the author, he says this. He's, he's talking about the, the guy up in Boston who said this thing. He says, uh, he talks about the style of thinking in this particular business, sports broadcasting, that is shock, awe, and indef- indefensible positions that, that are made to grow listenership. Again, I don't, like, that's why I want to ask you guys. 
we about to get out of here in about another 10 minutes or so. But I want to ask you guys, the people who are listening to the show, the Lion Sports Talk podcast, Ernie, Big L, I Am No Doze, Renee, everybody who can hear me right now, if you want to text your answer to 404-902-8104, um, what are you guys looking for? What are you guys looking for in, like, when you, when you turn on a, a sports talk show, what do you want? Because most of the time, people are going to give you, like, I'm going to give you what I want you to get. You know what I mean? That's, that's the premise of my show and just, and just hope that what I care about and the things that interest me interest you guys as well. But if it were you, if it were you behind the mic, like, what would you want to give people? So everybody take your time. You can answer the question or whatever. Uh, it is the one mic with Big Mike show. I got about 10 minutes left in this show. I, did, I wasn't sure it was going to take me two hours to get all this crap out of my mouth tonight. But I never really think it will. The Hawks take on the uh, the Phoenix the, the Phoenix Suns tonight for my people here in the A. Let me give you guys the rest of the NBA schedule real quick, and I want to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that I've been watching before we get about get about it here for the day. Uh, already going on right now, the Kings uh, boogie them is taking on the process in Philadelphia. You got uh, the Pistons and the, those same aforementioned Celtics going at it. Right now, you got the uh, the Grizz and the Toronto Raptors going on. The Lakers and the Bulls. Remember that video game, Bulls versus Lakers, for my people that's over thirty five or whatnot. Uh, the Knicks and the Timberwolves at uh, eight. That's already started. The the uh, Washington Wizards and the Thunder. Russ going for another damn uh, uh, triple double. The Spurs and the Mavericks. The Mavericks are trash. Dirk hurt. Uh, you got the Heat and the Nuggets. The Hawks and the, the Suns, as I mentioned earlier, the Pacers. I hadn't seen no Pacers basketball this year, like highlights. But I hadn't seen like Paul George and Jeff Teague and them boys play this year. Uh, it's on NBA TV later on, so I'm thinking I'm gonna stay up and watch that against Dame Lillard and that Portland squad. Him and uh, CJ McCollum and McCullum and them boys up there. Um, so I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm reading through the chat room real quick to see. Uh, Renee Sink, I think everyone has to realize childbirth does not always go smoothly. 18% of every uh, 100,000 mothers die every year during childbirth. Yeah, and that's that's the other thing about it, too. Like, that's the other thing. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to not be there and something go wrong with the baby or your wifey or anything like that. You know, so that that little bit of a fear factor, <laughs> you know what I mean, is enough to be like, ah, oh, man, F this, F this damn basketball game, man. I mean, for those of us who care about our women, <laughs> I mean, like, some of you do is like, whatever. Is she cooking? Is she effing good? <laughs> That's all I need. You know, you you freaking cavemen. Um, Big L says we all we all give and look for the truth. Yeah. Um, oh, we're talking about sports talk shows. Yeah. Um, looking to be entertained. Like, okay, I am those. You looking to be entertained? Well, I don't know. I am no those. You come here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and listen to this crap. I don't know. Am I entertaining? Um. The line sports talk. I want to. I want. I want to think while I'm listening. Yeah. See, that that's kind of where I'm at, dude. I want to hit people in 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 a mental space. You know what I mean? All that hollering and yelling and I'm right, you're wrong. Embrace debate foolishness. It's like, come on. I I, I can't be anyone but me. Like the things I talk about, are the things that I believe in. And if people don't agree with them, that's fine. I welcome that. I'm an adult. <laughs> you know, I understand that. You know, I, people aren't going to agree with me. But I'm also not closed minded to the point where I can't hear somebody else's point of view. I can't I can't acknowledge the fact that you bring something to the table as well. Unless it's like totally like ridiculous. You know, I'll call you on that crap real quick. Um, topical stuff. I like to have my opinion changed or swayed. Uh, yeah, like I, I see where you're going with that. I don't, the changing of the opinion and stuff is like, oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um but I see what you're saying. Same thing I'm saying, like being open to, to different perspectives on things. Um, Big L. Big L said this to me before. Big L says, I'm not a fan of ESPN talk shows. Me neither, dude. Like that, they become so hokey. You know the best show, and I say this all the time, the best show on ESPN is Bob Lee's Outside the Lines. And if you watch that show, you can tell, man, my man is like trying to hurry through and get through his 22 minutes real quick. That show should be, if any show on that station should be an hour. Meanwhile, they got freaking Stephen A and these these clowns on like back to back to back. It was I don't watch the show, so one time I had to ask my man. I was like, "Damn man, how long is that damn show?" I didn't realize they was playing it back to back. I thought it was like a three hour show, like a radio show. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, so yeah, I, the best show on that that joint man 
it's definitely outside the line. We want to learn some things and, and get some insight on things and hear people talk about, you know, stories that matter outside of football. Yeah. I mean, outside of sports, I should say. But they only give it like this, like 30 minute block, 22 minutes with commercials, you know, and they do it a, a total disservice. By the way, speaking of ESPN, ESPN is losing since, since last month uh, a record for them. Uh, the worst two months in ESPN history, they're losing subscribers at a rate of like 20 grand per per day over the last two months. And it's like a couple hundred grand uh, a, a, a month over the last couple of years. Like they're they're dropping numbers. You see all these people leaving, right, and getting not, not having their contracts renewed? Yeah, that's why. Um, I Am No Doze says he only listens to Bamani Jones on ESPN for the most part. Uh, Bamani's a real smart dude, man. I talk about him a lot on on this show. Like he – he thinks a lot of the same way I do. He's just a he's just a, a hella hella more articulate than I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like way more articulate, and he's, he's he's smarter than I am too. I don't agree with everything he says on things, but uh, he he shared. Y'all hear that? It's a damn. Oh, that's Amber Alert. I thought it was that tornado alert as well. Um, so if y'all see a damn a white Ford F one fifty, they done stole somebody's kid. Report them. Um. Ernie says he needs truth, veracity, precision, authenticity, and candor. Damn. Why are you listening to this then? <laughs> you need truth? I can provide that. I don't know how much veracity. I, don't, I definitely don't know how much precision I got. The authenticity? Yeah, I'm just saying who I am. And uh, candor? I'm pretty open. So, I don't know. Three out of five? Ain't bad, I guess. Um, oh, God. I am no... Like, yeah, yeah. I'll call you when the checks start coming. Big L says I'm better than anything on ESPN. Like, look, I'll call you when the, when the ESPN type checks come in. <laughs> I used to work with this dude that was like that. He was such, he was so annoying. This dude down here named Mark Zeno, who equated everything he did to somebody else's check. Like, somebody was like, "You sound like a clown. You sound like that clown Skip Bayless. You know how much money Skip Bayless make? As if that makes somebody good at something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the that's the end all be all of somebody being good at something and how much money some other idiot is willing to pay them to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't want to be that dude. So I appreciate it. I am no uh, not I am Big L. I appreciate it, brother. Um It's not often, but I am open minded. <laughs> be truthful. Be truthful, my man. Yeah, if you ain't that dude, uh you ain't that dude. Um The last thing I wanna do, because I got a couple minutes. Um, couple shows. Oh, I got to hit the little, the little thing, the little what you looking at thing, huh? The little this thing here. What you looking at? Hey, what looking at? hey. I tell you guys what I'm looking at. Um, a couple of things that I am looking at have been renewed. Um, a couple of things that I don't look at no more. Like Ray Donovan, I canceled my 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 Showtime. It's a good ass show though. Um, Westworld, if you guys been checking that out on HBO, that's been renewed. Insecure is coming back. Uh, Atlanta coming back. The, the, the joint on FX is coming back. Um, what else do they got here? I got, I got the list in front of me. It's like one of those click things that you got to like click through it to, uh, you know, to, to see the different shows or whatever. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at, I've been, I told you guys just now that I canceled my my showtime but the show that I, I got caught up in before i canceled it was uh was shameless but apparently shameless is on netflix now too so i've been watching it let me tell y'all something of of all the characters i watch a lot of tv all the characters on tv if you guys watch shameless you know what i'm about to say this kid this dude frank gallagher my god he's the worst human being on earth like whoever the dude is or girl who writes for that character they are effed up in the head, dude. This dude is the worst cat ever. I'm on the last, well, the most current season right now. Like, this dude take his damn, his black son out <laughs> and, and, and dress him up like a homeless dude and start begging for money for people to go. Oh, man, he's just he's just terrible, man. He blew up his, his daughter's wedding my blasting her, her future husband out about his damn heroin use. Just crazy, ridiculous stuff. It's a good-ass show, though. So I do, I do uh, suggest it to you guys. The other thing, speaking of Netflix, Netflix now allows you to Netflix and chill without, like, on the go without using data. They now allow you to download your situation and uh, take it with you on the go. So if you're somewhere where ain't no, uh, ain't no Wi-Fi or whatever, your service ain't good there, boom, you can still watch your Netflix situation. I think that's a pretty uh, pretty big game changer. 
for 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 what I'm for what I'm understanding, if I can say it in English, um, Amazon has already had that, and so now Netflix is on board, and you can just jump on and bang, you know, hit that up. Um, yeah, we got a couple minutes. Let me let me clean up this this chat room stuff. The line sports talk podcast has really enjoyed the show. Please check out uh, T. Oh, the line and Joey Peeps on. God damn. Oh, Mickey Donovan. Y'all, oh, hell yeah. Oh, Mickey Donovan, a, a, an ignorant human being, too. Um, remind, oh, damn. Mickey Donovan reminds you of your pops, except dad loves Mexican women. <laughs> All right, man. Be easy, man. I'm about to wrap this thing up myself, too, man. Um, you got a great group of listeners, too. Comments in the chat room, tremendous. Yeah, man. Good. Shout out to you guys for the day, man. To, for the, today, Wednesday. I told Renee earlier, man, me and Renee going to have a powwow, man, and try to, you know, up the ante here on the sports, on, on, on the One Mike with Big Mike show, man, the guests and all this kind of thing. Because I appreciate you dudes taking, you dudes and you ladies take time out your day to mess with me. Um, I know everybody ain't got two hours to, you know, dedicate to somebody else's thing, but it, it means a lot to me, man, that you guys will, you know, support and, 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 and hold me down. Um, and also, it, it helps the show go by, not, not just me being, just sitting here at my desk talking to myself for two hours. I mean, I can do it, but it gets mundane at times. You know what I mean? Getting the perspectives of other people and things of that nature. So, you know, shout out to you guys, man, everybody in the chat room, everybody listening that didn't participate, same to you. Uh, We're going to wrap things up. Come back. Try to do it again. Do it a little bit better on Friday. You know, every week, every every, every show, man, we work on guests, work on getting people on. Um, You know what? I'll open it up to you guys, man. Let me know who you guys would like to hear for. Like, people that you guys would like us to go after. Because sometimes I get, like, real selfish with the guests. Like, people who I want to talk to. And, you know, there have been times that people who I didn't really think I wanted to talk to, Renee would present them to me. And I, I would feel better after talking to them. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Part of my gig is, part of my thing is that I don't know everything, man. You know? And everything don't don't flow right because it flowed through me. It is the One Mic with Big Mike show. Spreaker.com. The app. Tune in. One Mic with Big Mike.com iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, YouTube. Those are all the outlets in which you can get a hold of this damn whatever it is. You can also check me out on Facebook, One Mike with Big Mike. The video will be up there as well, the video for the show. Uh, Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the number one M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Take my email address down. If you know anybody who wants to intern with the boy, tell them to send me an email to Mike at One Mike with Big Mike dot com. Until Friday, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you. Uh, be safe. Got to have a tornado. If you hear in the A, man, batting down the damn hatches, whatever the hell that means, batting them, batting them damn hatches down and get ready for this damn storm that's about to come through, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Big L. Uh, share the show, too, man. Let people know. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a damn friend that I'm here, man, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You guys be easy. And until Friday, uh, be safe, man. <laughs>